Hello everyone, welcome to chapter 14. This is the first part of our Chem 112 course and in chapter 14 we're going to look at chemical kinetics and in the entire chapter we're going to cover these outcomes. You're welcome to read those at your leisure but I've also broken them down by part so I'm just going to focus on that. In, in the first part of chapter 14 we're going to look at rates of reactions um, and we're going to see how we measure rates. We're going to look at what a rate law expression is. And then we're going to look at orders. Um, rates are defined by the order. of, um, and, and we'll see how that is actually defined a little bit later. So kinetics is just the study of rates. And then it's also the study of the mechanisms of the chemical reactions. Because no one chemical reaction has one step usually. It usually has multiple steps. And each one of those proceeds at a certain rate or speed. And so we're going to see how they can be limited. The reaction rate is the rate at which either the reactants are disappearing or, conversely, the products are appearing. The mechanism for a reaction is the series of steps that it takes for that reaction to occur. So rate is really how much quantity per given time. And so a lot of times you're going to see it expressed in kind of an odd um, um, unit like molarity per second or something like that, okay? And so because it's how much the concentration is decreasing over time, if you're looking at the reactant side, or it's how much product is being produced. And so the speed at which you drive your car is a rate. You usually do miles per hour or kilometers per hour. And so the rate that you're driving your car has units of miles per hour or kilometers per hour. And so the reaction rate we define as concentration per time instead of distance per time. So several factors can affect the rate of reactions. The nature of the reactant, what is it? What kind of, uh, kind of material is it? If it? Is it a liquid or a, or a gas? Is it really reactive or is it really slow to react like an inert gas? Is it already an ion which would allow it to react even faster? What type it is? What state it's in? And then the size of it. Things that are smaller tend to react quicker. And so if you've got something big, it might take it a little bit longer to get started. Another factor that affects the reaction rate is the concentration. And we typically look at molarity when we're talking about these because most of these reactions we're looking at in an aqueous or water-borne medium. And so we look at the concentration in molarity. The temperature is also going to affect the reaction rate. Almost always, if you increase the temperature, you're going to increase the rate. So if you heat it up, you're going to increase that rate. And finally, the last thing that you might not think about is a catalyst. And a catalyst is something that can act on the reaction without actually being used up uh, completely or it's able to go back to its original form and, and then catalyze another reaction. And so catalysts work by decreasing activation energy. And we're going to talk about catalysts a little bit more at the end. So we measure reaction rates um, by measuring those concentrations. So we can hook up some, some type of uh, measurement device and we can see the concentration of the reactant going down or we can see the concentration of the product going up. And it usually just depends on which one of those it's easier to label with something that is a color because in, in um, colors we can pick up on those because of the wavelengths of the light and everything. And so we can either do that continuously or in line they call it and monitor those um, as it's going per time and it'll actually graph it for you as you're watching it. Or you could do just a batch testing of it and just take samples at certain times and then inject it in an instrument and then see what that concentration is and then plot that. But we're basically looking at what is that change over time. So 
we said it's the disappearance of the reactants and the appearance of the products. So if we're looking at the rate in terms of the reactants, we're going to have a negative delta, negative change of the concentration of A per A time, change in time, or B. If it's the product, it's going to be the increase of that product in concentration over time, the change in time. So the rate is very simply the change in concentration, usually molarity, in time. And you'll use seconds if it's something that's going to be a fast reaction. You might use hours if it's something that takes longer. So this brings into mind something that we call the rate law expression. And the rate law expression is very simply that the rate of the reaction is equal to some specific rate constant K times the concentration of A raised to its order times the concentration of B raised to its order times the concentration of C raised to its order. Now let me go ahead and tell you, K depends on temperature, so K will stay the same as long as you don't change the temperature, okay? Um, you, you must experimentally determine that, so you really have to run an experiment to see what K is. The X, Y, and Z, the exponents, are not based on coefficients or anything else, okay? They must be experimentally determined. So you have to run an experiment, get data, do a calculation to actually find out what those orders are. So we can express this either as the re reactant in the reaction or the overall reactant. So, or overall reaction. So when we're looking at it, we're just going to say, okay, we're going to see how fast we are getting rid of our reactions. So how quickly is that concentration decreasing over time? And we, that allows us to figure out what the orders are Okay, and once we figure out the order of each individual, okay, in this case we only have one, okay, we find out what the order of it is, and then the sum of the orders is the overall order of the reaction. So if we ran an experiment and we found that this is a first order in N205, there's only one thing. So the overall order is also going to be first order. So if a reaction is a zero order, and we're going to talk, we're going to learn how to do this in the next section. Okay, so for now, just kind of ride with me um, as we just it, it describe these things. Okay, if a reaction is a zero, or you'll see also it's it's technically zeroth order. The rate of the reaction does not change, okay? So if it's a zeroth order, so if this is zero here, it doesn't matter what I do, I'm not going to change the rate because if I double the concentration, two times, one times that to the zero power is what? One. Anything to the zero power, like n to the zero, is one, right? n to the first is whatever n was. n to the second is n squared, right? Okay, so if I if this was 1 and I doubled it times 2, 2 to the 0 is still 1. So I'm not going to change anything by doing that. So we write the rate law for that as the rate is equal to the constant K at a specific temperature times the concentration of A to the zero power. So the rate is going to be equal to whatever K is because K times A to the zero is the same as K times one is going to be equal to K because anything to the zero power is one. And so your, your units are going to be 
molarity per second. Okay, and the other way to write that is molarity times second to the minus one. Because remember, one over second is equal to second minus one. All right, if you're rusty on this stuff, there are some tutorials in mastering and you can go and look at those. They're not for credit or anything, but there's like a math tutorial and it, you can remind yourself of these things, of these exponents and powers and all that stuff, okay? So don't, don't panic if you don't remember this. Just go back and review it. If the reaction is a first order, so K times A to the first power, right? Then the rate is gonna be K times A. because a to the first power is a. And you're gonna have molarity per second, again, as your rate. I'm sorry, as your rate, okay? If it's to the second power, then that's gonna be k times a squared right, which is going to be K squared. So if K, if the concentration of A was 2 molar, and it's to the second, oops, say 2 there, okay, then 2 squared is going to be, what, 4 times K. All right? And we don't really go much past that, not in this class anyway. It gets really, really complicated, and you definitely have to have calculus to do it any farther than that. All right? So your rate law expression has got to be determined experimentally. You cannot look at a reaction and, a, and the balanced chemical equation for that reaction and figure out what the order is. You have to run an experiment See how it changes, see what the rate is, okay? See if you double something, what it does to the rate, etc., to understand what the, the uh, rate is. So the coefficients do not have anything to do with kinetics. Nothing, okay? So the rate law shows you how the rate depends on the concentration of the reactants. Changing the initial concentration of a reactant will affect the initial rate. And that's what we're going to use in the next section to figure out how to calculate these. So join me when we do that, and we will see how you actually push, put those numbers in and calculate these rate law expressions.